All Things Mavs. What's up, Mavs fans? Welcome into All Things Mavs, and I'm your host, Jimmy Crowther, with you as always. And today I'm breaking down five tough minded veteran free agents the Dallas Mavericks could go out and sign this offseason. Now, I want to take a look ahead to the offseason and what it's going to look like for the Mavs because we do know what they want to do, as I'm going to address on this show. They want to add some tough-minded veterans, but their cap space is a little bit tight because Tim Hardaway Jr. has a $19 million player option that everyone expects him to pick up because he probably ain't getting $19 million on the open market. Now, one thing Dallas definitely needs to do besides just adding veterans is address their defensive, really, lack of talent, and their ability to score off the bench and playmaking behind Luka Doncic. So that's what I'm going to try to address with these veteran free agents today. And things I kind of wanted to make sure we're, you know, on the same page with is that, number one, these free agents are veterans. You guys know that. They're a little bit on the tougher side. We know that. But also, they're going to come cheap, and they're going to be affordable. So we're going to be realistic here. We're not going to be picking up any Anthony Davis or Brandon Ingrams anytime soon. So before I get into those deals and tell you about the cheap free agents, I want to tell you about these cheap jerseys that are coming to you from Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash Mavs jersey. And all of these jerseys right now are shipping for free for a limited time only. Whether you want a Luka Doncic one or if you haven't gotten your Chris Outs Porzingis City Edition, you can get that as well. These ones, they're leaving the, the, the shelves pretty soon, so go pick one up while you can. If you're a newer Mavs fan, you don't have a Dirk jersey, you're missing out. Go rep the GOAT today. Hey, I even saw, I know I told you about the Isaiah Roby jerseys. Well, guess what? I saw Josh Reeves and Antonius Cleveland jerseys on that link. So go click it, chatsports.com slash NBA, or slash Mavs jersey, excuse me. It's going to be in the comments, and it's going to be in the description. So we're starting off our free agents here with Jordan Clarkson of the Utah Jazz. Now, I wanted to kind of stay away from point guards, but I'm going to go more shooting guard here with Clarkson. He brings that score-first mentality to the Mavs. He immediately answers questions as a secondary or off-the-bench playmaker. And, man, if you look up Jordan Clarkson fights on YouTube, you're going to find yourselves quite a few. Whether he was with the Lakers, the Cavs, or the Jazz, he knows how to mix it up with his opponents. Now, my one problem with Jordan Clarkson is he's not a great defender, and when he has the ball in his hands, he ain't going to pass it. He's going to look to score almost every single time. Now, he really did have a solid overall year, not just with the Utah Jazz, but also with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And when you're putting up these kind of numbers off the bench, you're going to be able to bring a scoring punch to a contending team, unlike he was when he was with Cleveland. Now, the stats between Utah and Cleveland, they're very, very similar, but he was a little bit more efficient and scored a couple more buckets per game with the Utah Jazz. Now, this trade happened pretty early on in the season. Remember, Dante Exum went from Utah to Cleveland for some reason, and the Jazz get a guy off the bench that can score 16 points per game. Now, he can play that point guard position or the two guard position, and I know a lot of you guys are like, Jimmy, we don't need a point guard. We got Luka Doncic, we have J.J. Barea, we have Trey Burke, we have Jalen Brunson. Forget about the point guards. But maybe you're on the opposite side of it, and maybe you do want a point guard. So what I want you to do is just name one point guard that is a free agent that you'd like the Mavs to sign. Maybe it is Jordan Clarkson, or maybe... It's a guy like Goran Dragic, who I don't have on this list because I don't consider him a tough-minded veteran like Jordan Clarkson, but let me know in the comment section below. Just name one point guard you'd like to see the Mavs sign. Now let's go to the two-guard slash small forward position, and we're going to go with Andre Roberson of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now he has faced all kinds of injuries. I mean, more injuries than I'll probably ever have in my life, but he's still pretty young, He's still in his prime, in all honesty, when it comes to health or when it comes to uh, physicality. And if he can stay healthy, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA, which makes him a perfect addition to this Mavs team. Not to mention, he'd probably like be a pretty easy veteran minimum pickup. That's all I'm saying. Now he didn't play all year long. But then the bubble came around, he got healthy, he played in seven games in the NBA bubble, but he only scored in four of those games, so I pulled these four games up for you here. 11 minutes versus the Lakers, he had four points and six boards. You can see in all these games, he gets double-digit minutes and really has four-plus rebounds in every single game and shot the ball pretty efficiently as well. Now, when you sign Andre Roberson, you're not signing him for his offense, although he did show off an improved jump shot inside the NBA bubble. You're signing him 
because he can play defense probably better than anyone not named Dorian Finney-Smith on this Mavericks team right now. So, heck, if Andre Roberson wants to sign for the minimum, I'm giving him that deal and taking a chance on him because he's tough, he's a vet, and he plays good defense. So what do you think is the bigger need for the Mavs this offseason? Do you think it's offense or do you think it's defense? If you're thinking offense, you're probably liking my Jordan Clarkson pick a little bit better. If you're typing your D for defense, you probably like that Andre Roberson pickup just a little bit better. And I think it's pretty obvious, and I know producer Dylan agrees with me here. Defense, a much b bigger need. But what if I could tell you that you could get both offense and defense in the same player? Well, that's our next guy. Jay Crowder, and yes, you're like Jimmy. You talk about this guy any chance you get on this account, on this channel. You literally bring him up all the time. I think you have a little bit of a man crush. Uh, maybe I do, and maybe I'm exposing myself here on YouTube, but I want Jay Crowder back in a Dallas Maverick uniform really more than I want any free agent this offseason. This guy, when it comes to his three-point shooting, his defensive ability, the way he will literally punch someone in the mouth to win a game – would change the way this Mavs team plays. And not only is he that tough-minded free agent during the regular season, but this Miami team, they're in the NBA Finals. And they probably wouldn't be doing as well if they didn't have Jay Crowder because you can see what he's done in the playoffs. He has been excellent, and he has made a difference in every single round. Round one, 10 points per game, 33% from three. In the semifinals, he was outstanding. 15 points per game and 43% from three. Conference Finals took a little bit of a step back, but he's been shooting the lights out in the NBA Finals so far. Still got at least one more game left to play as we record this today, but he's shooting the ball 40% from three. I am so high on Jay Crowder, and I don't know how much more I can sell you guys on the idea of bringing Crowder back to Dallas and putting him back in a Maverick uniform. So I'm going to ask you this question. You can see it right here. Do you want Crowder back? And uh, let me let me rephrase that, actually. Do you want Jay Crowder back as badly as I do? Because, listen, if they can get him for the mid-level, if they can even, I'd pay more than the mid-level to get Crowder back in a Maverick uniform. He would be perfect. But let me know in the comment section. Maybe you think we don't need him. Maybe you do. Just let me know. Now, one thing that is really, really, honestly, great about this channel is the way we get to interact with you guys. And that's why I'm asking you this question. So go ahead and give me the answer down below. Do you want Jay Crowder back on the Dallas Mavericks? Now let's talk about the power forward position with Bobby Portis and the New York Knicks. And you're like, wait a second, Bobby Portis? Didn't he just sign a $15 million deal with the Knicks? Yeah, he did, but he's got a team option on that second year, and everybody expects the Knicks to go ahead and decline that team option and kick him out into unrestricted free agency. And I'll tell you what, because he ain't getting $15 million again this year. If he's available for the Mavs and the Mavs want a guy that's going to put up a fight and protect Luka Doncic, that's what Bobby Portis is going to do. Now, I told you to go look up Jordan Clarkson fights on YouTube, but how about you go look up Bobby Portis fights on YouTube? You'll see him fighting other teams, and you'll even see him fighting against own players on his own team. I mean, this guy, I, he would be fun. Now, could he be a bit of a locker room cancer? Potentially, but it might just be worth it for a Mavericks team who... Who's your toughest player? Dorian Finney-Smith? He's not really going to put up much of a fight against some of these bigger guys. Now, Portis did have a down year with the Knicks this year. He only shot 35% from three and only scored 10 points. But you got to remember, the Knicks signed just about every single free agent power forward that was available. So he got buried in that rotation. I think he's more of a 15 to 16 point per game scorer. And on this Maverick team, if they want a big man, and Bobby Portis is willing to take less than 15 mil, that might make a lot of sense for the Mavs. Now, Mavs fans, again, I love interacting with you guys, and the best way to interact with me is to make sure that you have subscribed to the All Things Mavs channel. I'm trying to hit 8,000 subscribers as soon as possible, and you guys have been helping me out all along the way. I appreciate all y'all. I saw some people in here that were like, hey, Jimmy, I've been subscribed since you had 500 subscribers. You are the real MVP, but it's not too late to get in on the MVP race. All you got to do is scroll on down and hit that big red subscribe button. I'll put the link in the description and in the comment section as well. You click that link, it's going to automatically make you subscribe to the All Things Maps channel, and you don't want to miss it. Now, we talked about a power forward. Let's talk about a center, Aaron Baines, a guy that was actually a free agent last year and a guy that Heck, I would take on the Mavs every single day of the week. I remember middle of the year, Dwight Powell tore his Achilles, and I was like, hey, Aaron Baines wouldn't be a bad trade target because, number one, this guy can stretch the floor. Number two, 
You think about what J.J. Barea does from the point guard position where he's not a great defender, but he knows how to get under def uh, offensive players' skin, right, on the defensive end. That's what Aaron Baines does, except imagine J.J. Barea in a seven-foot body that is like a big Australian dude that's been lifting weights. That's what Aaron Baines is, and I think that's why he'd be a perfect fit on this Mavs team if they feel like they need a big man, which is really not necessarily the case. Now, with Phoenix this year, it was a very weird year because he starts the first half while DeAndre Ayton was suspended for basically taking steroids, and he played great, scored 12 points per game, six rebounds, and shot better than 35% from three. But then the Suns got DeAndre Ayton back, and they were like, eh, Aaron Baines, we love you. We definitely, you know, you got the Aaron Baines fan club all over Twitter, but DeAndre Ayton's our future, so we're going to need you to take a seat on the bench. And now he's entering free agency where I think he's going to fall through the cracks and land on a contender and really be able to help some team off the bench and be that enforcer role for a team, maybe the Dallas Mavericks. Now, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, I, I want to give you your round of applause here because you guys are, you're the real ones. You're the real Mavs fans that stay all the way till the end. So I want to test you. And if you are here at the end, I want you to name your top three targets for the Dallas Mavericks this offseason. I know we just talked about free agents, but hey, since you're at the end of the video, I'm going to let you decide. You can name your top three trade targets, your top three free agency targets, your top three draft targets, or heck, give me a mix of all three of them into one. Mavs fans, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like the video, hit subscribe, and comment down below.